Hey everyone, today I have a new Lightroom tutorial for you guys and I'm gonna take you step by step on how I would edit this portrait that I took on the Sony 28 to 70 kit lens. So the camera body that I was using for this is the Sony a7 III, which I know is a pro body, but we did use a kit lens to capture this really beautiful photo. And I remember when I uploaded this photo shoot behind the scenes video, which if you haven't seen it, I'll leave it linked down below. It was a really fun shoot and I'm super happy with the images that I got. You guys were asking me to see a Lightroom tutorial on a kit lens, so here we are today. <laughs> Today in Lightroom, we're going to be using pretty much all the sliders available to us, but one of the main aspects and the star of today's Lightroom tutorial is going to be split toning. I wanna to show you guys how you can completely transform the mood of a photo, mainly by using split toning. So we're gonna jump into it and I really hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Zooming in the image to 100%, we can see that it is super sharp on Karina's eyes and there's lots of detail in the photo, but I still want to sharpen it just a little bit more because I really love the detail and the texture that sharpening brings out in a portrait. I feel like it really makes eyelashes and eyebrows and stuff stand out a lot, which I love. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to head into our tone curve where I'm going to add a little bit of style to the tones of our image. I'm going to pull the black slider up slightly and then I'm also going to pull the shadows very close by to the blacks down to add a nice kind of matte texture to the shadows of our image, but also still keeping it quite contrasty. And then I'm gonna pull the midtones of our curve up above the midline in the tone curve to brighten it up and then I'm also going to grab a point here in the highlights of the image and pull it down because we do have some very bright highlights in our original exposure so I kind of want to turn down turn that down a little bit with our edit. The next thing I want to do is go into our basic column and I'm going to start by trying to balance out the tones of the image a little bit more after we've already done our tone curve. So the first thing I wanna focus on is the highlights because they are very distracting in this image. So I'm gonna bring them down pretty much the entire way. And we are able to save quite a large amount of information in this photo. As you can see, we've got a little bit of water texture back in the background. And we can also see this really beautiful bucket of the sun hitting the water, which I really love. Now I'm also going to bring up the shadows so we have more detail and more information on Karina's face because in the end run for me, the face and the eyes are the most important part of a portrait, so that's what I mostly like focusing on while I'm shooting and while I'm editing. I'm also going to bring the white point down a bit, again, just to help with that highlight recovery of this really bright original image that we have. And I'm also going to bring the black slider down as well to add some more contrast. Now we have the image looking pretty balanced out in terms of tone. Here is the before straight out of the camera and here is our edit so far. However, it's looking a bit like a HDR kind of edit, which is really not what I'm going for at all. So I'm gonna try and tone down our balancing a little bit more and I feel like bring back a little bit more imbalance to the photo because it actually looked better uh, with you know darker shadows and slightly brighter highlights. So I'm gonna start by bringing the shadow slider down to darken the image up. And I'm also going to pull up the exposure just again to brighten up this section of the photo. And I don't wanna pull it up too much because I do still wanna retain a little bit of that texture here that I really like. And I'm also going to bring the highlights up slightly and the white point as well. Okay, so now here is a before and after. I feel like it looks a little better now. It's not quite so HDR. Um, I'm going to bring the temperature up slightly as it does look a little bit cold straight out of the camera. And then now I wanna head into HSL. So there's not too much that I wanna do with the hue and saturation sliders. Today I really wanna focus on the luminance. So luminance in HSL basically determines how bright or dark a color looks in your photo. So for example, if I take the blue luminance slider, if I pull it up, all the blues in the image will become brighter. And if I pull it down, all the blues will become darker. 
So that's what we're gonna be focusing on. I normally really like to shoot with white outfits and a little trick that I've learned with a white top or a white dress or basically any white clothes in general is that by using luminance, especially the blues and the purples, you can brighten up any light colored fabrics. So I'm gonna start by pulling up the luminance of purple and then I'm also going to bring up the blue luminance, which will also help brighten her eyes and make them stand out in the image. The next lighters I want to focus on are with Karina's skin tone. So I'm going to be using red, orange and yellow for her hair. I'm going to bring the yellow up just a little bit. As you can see, if I bring it up very high, her hair starts kind of disappearing, which we don't want. I just want to brighten it up a little bit here on the edges. Then I'm also going to bring up the orange luminance slider, which will help bring, make it appear as if there's more light on her face as it will make oranges, which is usually found in skin tones, look brighter. And then the same thing with the red slider too. And then I also like to do that with magenta. I find that the highlights of a face are usually found in the magenta luminance slider. So if I pull it down, you can see it very clearly. You've got like the highlight of her nose. Usually the lip highlights are in magenta too and parts of her forehead. So I like to just brighten that up as it's very flattering for a portrait. Next, I'm gonna go into saturation under HSL. And the only thing I wanna do here is to bring the blue slider up, which will saturate her eyes and the top and anything else that's blue in the image because again, I really want her eyes to stand out. So here is a before and after of what we've done in HSL. We've basically just very subtly brightened up some important points of the colors in the portrait area of our photo. So last but not least, and the thing that I think will make the biggest difference in today's photo is split toning. So usually when I use split toning, I like to have opposite colors in the highlights and the shadows. So if I pick a warm highlight, I like to use a cool colored shadow. And the same goes the other way. If I use a cold color highlights, I like to use like a red or an orange or yellow in the shadows. For today's photo, I think it will look really nice and kind of breathe some life into it if we add a nice kind of golden hour yellow hue to the highlights. And I'm gonna keep the saturation up quite high. And then in the shadows, as I said, I wanna go for a more opposite color. So I think a purple would really complement this warm highlight that we have. So I'm gonna go around here. I think just about there looks nice. And then what I like to do, as you see, I pull up the saturation quite high as I'm moving the hue slider. And once I found the color that I like, then I bring down the saturation until I'm happy with the way that it blends into the photo. So here is a before and after of the split turning. This is the before and this is the after. Even though I keep my saturation quite low to add a subtle color effect to my images, it still makes a really big difference to what it looks like before split turning compared to what it looks like after. So I feel like split turning in this instance has added a nice kind of golden hour look to the photo. I feel like also adding warmth to the overall image again has really made Karina's eyes stand out in the photo. So your eyes, when you look at the picture, are really drawn to her eyes, which is my main aim when I'm editing a portrait. I think before we move into Photoshop, I'm also going to just bring up the temperature a little bit more as well. And I'm also going to bring the tint down slightly a little bit more into the greens. So I think just on zero, it looks really good. So here is a final before and after of all our edits in Lightroom. This is the before straight out of the camera image and this is the after. So now I'm gonna switch over to my Wacom tablet instead of using my mouse because the next step in my process to editing any photo that I ever send to a client or post online is to retouch in Photoshop. In Photoshop, I use the frequency separation technique to do my retouching. I really like it because it's quite quick and easy to do, but you are able to still retain a lot of skin texture so the retouching looks nice and natural. If you guys wanna see a complete skin retouching tutorial, I'll leave it linked down below. I uploaded one, I think a couple, a few months ago now, but that is basically the exact process that I'm currently using to retouch all my portraits. So if you wanna learn how I retouch, please go and watch that video because I go into 
all the details about that there. I also have a free frequency separation Photoshop action, which again, I'll leave linked down below in the description and in the skin retouching tutorial as well. And it basically just saves you having to do about five or six steps to get frequency separation up and running. So this action is just a one click and it does it for you. And then the final thing that I've started doing recently in Photoshop is I like to make a new layer and change it to soft light and fill it in with 50% gray. And then I like to use the dodge and burn tool to just kind of add a bit of highlights to my portrait and also deepen some shadows in particular places. And I feel like it just adds a really nice finishing touch to my portrait. So I'm able to bring a little bit more light into the eyes or under like on the brow bone or on the cheekbones. And I just feel like it ends up tying everything all together. So I've been really loving doing that recently. So here is the final before and after. We have the original photo, then we have our edits in Lightroom, and then we have our edits in Lightroom plus our edits in Photoshop. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching today's tutorial and you picked up some new techniques that you can use when you're editing your photos next time. I would love to know what other Lightroom tutorials you guys would like to see, if there's any particular photos from a past photo shoot that I shared that you want me to go through. Let me know in the comments because I would love to make some more Lightroom tutorials for you guys. I love editing, so yeah, it's really fun getting to make these videos. But as always, I make new videos every single week, so I will see you guys all next time. Bye!